Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Today I'm going to talk to you about timing marks. Okay, so timing belts. Timing belts, we have uh, single cam, dual cam. We have, uh, sometimes we have dual cam V6s. Sometimes we have dual cam V6s. We have a crank. We have, sometimes we have an oil pump that needs to be timed. Okay, so something, I'm going to teach you guys a little trick, just a little tech tip of something that I've been doing for a very long time. So a long, long time ago, way back in the day, I did a timing belt on a dual overhead cam Mazda. I think it was my first dual overhead cam timing belt. I get done and it runs like poo. Can't figure it out. I, I haven't been doing it super long and I keep driving it and running it and revving it up and revving it up, hoping to, to, rev, the, to rev the rough run out of it. Even though in the back of my mind, I'm pretty sure I know what's wrong with it. Yeah, you guessed it. I mistimed it. And what did I miss time? The cams. Okay, so because of that, I started a little thing that I do, and I've been doing this my entire career. I've never stopped. I've never done a timing belt without doing this. So what I like to do is when I first get a timing belt, I will roll the engine over and time it. I get a top dead center, make sure that the crank lines up, make sure that the cams line up, Make sure everything is the way it needs to be. Okay, so in this video, I show you what kind of paint pens I use, but I get a paint pen. I have yellow, white, pink, depending on the car, depending on my mood. Sometimes I just feel a little pinky. Uh, so I'll get the pink one out or, you know, whatever. Um, and so I'll grab a paint pen and I will mark the sprocket to the belt. And I mark the sprocket to the belt and I go to the next sprocket. So if it's got dual cams i will mark both cam sprockets to the to the belt if it's got uh let's say it's like a pt cruiser where the back of the timing cover comes up near the timing belt i will actually even put a little reference mark on the cover because it's easy i already have the the paint pen i already i'm already marking it and i'll usually just kind of mark it and i'll put another mark and that mark is just so i can see in the end that it all lined up where it needs to be uh, if there's an oil pump i mark that sprocket not very many cars have a have a, a timed oil pump, but there are a few. And, uh, and so I will mark that as well, wherever the timing mark is. Um, and you don't necessarily have to mark the timing mark because some cars are like a Honda. You got the sprocket and you got a mark on this side and a mark on this side. Well, let's say you take like a four-cylinder Honda, right? It's got the sprocket there. It's got a mark here and a mark here. And what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to line it up with the head, right? So in a perfect world, if you could look, Here's the cylinder head, here's the sprocket, and they line up. Well, guess what? Those Hondas, right behind the, the, the cam sprocket, on the bottom, there's a plastic, plastic shield. And that plastic shield kind of gets in the way. So where here is the top of the head, that plastic shield kind of sticks up like this. So you have to use a mirror, and you have to hope that you're looking at it, and you're getting it just right, and just exactly where it needs to be. So... That's one example. Another example is a PT Cruiser. All right, so if you look at a PT Cruiser and you have a little window, you have a little, little circle you take out of the center of the cams. It's about that big. With a mirror, that lines up, right? Okay, well, so does that. And so does that. So that's one tooth off. That's one tooth off. That's perfect. Okay, so because those sprockets are the way they are, with a mirror... You think that it looks like it's lined up, and it's really not. So because of that, I mark the sprockets, mark the belt, mark the crank. A lot of times the crank, the, the mark for the crank is up here. Well, the belt comes around like this. So the mark is here, and there's a mark on the block, and those two have to line up. All right, So I'll come like right down at 6 o'clock, and I'll mark the crank, and I'll mark the belt. And I'll even put a little reference mark on the oil pan or whatever. So that way I know where it needs to be. Now you ask, why would I do this? It sounds so silly when there's already timing marks. And well, I've already done, maybe I've done a few timing belts. Maybe I've done 10 timing belts. Maybe I've done 50 timing belts. I've never had this problem. Here's why. Because all it takes is that one, all right? So when I was the foreman, I had to help a lot of guys. And there's a lot of times that you, you wouldn't believe how many times I had guys that have been doing this for, let's say, 15 years longer than me come up to me and say, hey, I did a timing belt on this car. Now it doesn't run right. Not sure what to do. What, what, what's wrong and what went wrong? All right. So I can probably count at least 10 times 
where I know of guys that have been doing this considerably longer than me, that they screwed up a dual overhead cam engine timing belt job. And now this, this car didn't have a broken timing belt when it came in. The car was timed when it came in. Had they put the marks on the belts and transferred the, the marks to the new belt, everything would have been fine. But they didn't do that. So a lot of those guys, they started doing that after that because of that problem. So it seems so simple. I can do it. It doesn't take more than five extra minutes to do this. And I know with peace of mind that when I get done, it's going to be exactly the way it needs to be. And it's going to run. And I don't have to take it apart, right? So that five minutes that I, that I spent on that one car just saved me maybe 20 minutes, maybe two or three hours. Maybe, just maybe, you screwed it up and it doesn't run. And now you're in a pickle. Now you've got the whole job to take back apart. Some timing belts are a little more tricky to just slip a belt a couple teeth. So that this is why I'm making this video. This is why I'm giving you this tech tip because it's very important. And when I tell you it takes five minutes, it really only takes, it probably doesn't even take five minutes. It, it, it takes longer to even think about it than it does to do it. So that is, that is the tech tip for this video. And let's get into it. Okay, so here is what I do. When I have a vehicle with a timing belt, I mark my old belt right there, the bottom one. I mark it to the sprockets. I'll show you that in a minute. And then when I'm all done, I pull the belt off and I lay the new one down on top of it and I mark it, okay? I do this on every pulley that has a timing mark. So on this one, it is a 3.5 Honda. It is two cams and a crank. So this is what I do. This is what it looks like. Got the paint marker on the ground. It's the one I recommend. Sharpie, oil-based, oil-based paint pen. This is what I use. I use all different colors. Okay, so here's what it looks like in the car. So we're gonna bring this down. So I mark this cam. And that's the new belt. I do the same thing over there. I'll mark that one. And now here's, here's why I like to do it. Well, one of the reasons I like to do it is this. So the timing mark for this is on top. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. The timing mark is on top. It's that arrow right at the bottom of the of the sprocket and it lines up. So you can't really line anything up with the belt there. So what I like to do is I mark the sprocket to the belt and I usually will give myself a reference right here to the engine somewhere so I know about where it needs to be. So that's what it looks like on the car. And now you see I haven't pulled the tensioner yet. So what I'll do at this point is I'll pull the, now that I, I got my new belt on, all the marks line up. They're all lining up with the existing, with the previous marks, which, which I verified was timed before I started. Now I'm going to pull that pin and I'm going to roll the engine over twice and make sure that all the timing marks that sprocket up top and on the cams all line up with the engine. And thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that maybe this video will help you from making a mistake like this. Maybe you'll adopt this or maybe you'll be like one of the few that just say, you know what? I don't need it. I can time it just fine. I've never had a problem. Great. I applaud you. And that's fantastic. So check out uh, Nuts and Bolts with Tone on Instagram. Uh, see the daily life as a mechanic, gas, gas mechanic, diesel mechanic, uh, you know, kind of everything. And uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, leave me a comment down below if you enjoyed this. If, hey, maybe you want to tell me about a story where maybe you messed up a timing belt. Maybe you saw somebody else mess up a timing belt and you were, th and you were thinking, ah, if you had just marked it, everything would have been fine. So check me out next time.